God forgives me. Hello. Welcome to my Storytime Library. I'm so thankful you're here. My name's Kayla, your librarian. I love being at the library. Storytime is probably my favorite time of day. Well, and snack time. I love snack time. What are some of your favorite snacks? Go ahead and shout it out on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Oh my goodness, now I'm hungry. Those snacks sound really yummy. This is a bit of a hot take, but I like carrots dipped in ranch dressing. They're so crunchy and delicious. Did you know there are tons of books at the library about food? Check out this stack here. Ooh, Pink Alicious by Victoria Kahn. I know this book. This little girl eats so many pink cupcakes that she turns pink from head to toe. And then she has to eat healthy green food to go back to normal. Hmm, what's this one? Don't Eat Bees by Dev Petty. This looks fun. This dog is giving advice on what to eat. For example, he says, dogs should eat the Thanksgiving turkey because it makes for a fun game of chase. <laughs> oh, yikes. But then he says not to eat bees. That's pretty silly. Oh, this is a good one. The Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Call. This is a classic. The caterpillar eats everything and then turns into a butterfly at the end. I would love to fly like a butterfly. These are great stories, but do you know what my favorite book is? You guessed it, the Bible. The Bible is full of true stories, things that really happened in real life. And the best one of all is the story of Jesus. I love learning about Jesus. He was a great storyteller. He told stories about birds, farmers, flowers, sheep, coins, pearls, so many fun things. I wonder if he told stories about pink cupcakes. Oh, okay, sorry, I'm so hungry. Maybe not cupcakes, but he did tell a story about a young man who was pretty hungry. He was so hungry, he almost ate pig slop. Ugh, gross. No way, I've never been that hungry. This story from the Bible is quite an amazing one though. It shows us just how much God loves us. Let's listen to it. Jesus loved to tell stories. People gathered from far away to hear his stories. Jesus believed that by listening to stories he told, his friends could understand what God was like. Jesus told the story of a farmer who had two sons. One day, the younger son said to his dad, I want my share of your money now. So the father gave him some money and the young son went far away to a distant land. In that faraway place, the younger son foolishly spent all his money. He didn't have any money left. He had nothing to eat, and he was so hungry. He got a job working for a farmer, but he didn't make much money, and he was always hungry. He noticed that the pig food was looking pretty tasty. That's when he had an idea. He thought, I'll go back to my dad and say sorry for what I did. Maybe he will forgive me. So he went back home. His dad had been waiting for him. When he saw his younger son from far away, he ran as fast as he could towards him. The dad gave his son a huge hug. The son said that he was sorry for what he had done. His dad forgave him and planned a big party to celebrate. The older brother was a bit jealous, but the father explained that they should be happy because his lost son was found. And so the family was reunited and had a huge party with music, dancing, and lots of yummy food. His son had come home. God forgives me. Ah! Woohoo! It's party time! 
The boy ran away, but then he came back home. Hooray! I'll bet they had yummy food at that party. I'm thinking Jesus must love parties if he told a story about one. But Jesus told that story so we'd understand God's love and forgiveness. Here's what I mean. Just like the kid in the story, we do bad things sometimes. We can be selfish and mean sometimes. That's called sin. When we sin, it's like we run away from God, just like the boy who ran away from his dad. We want to do things our own way. Most of the time, after I've done something wrong, I usually feel really bad about it. But when we say we're sorry, God forgives us. That means he wipes away our sin, giving us a clean heart. Psalm 51.10 says, Create in me a clean heart, O God. So when we tell God we were wrong, what do you think happens then? Right, God forgives us. You see, Jesus was God's son, and he never did anything wrong. But he took our punishment by dying for us and coming back to life. When we believe in him, God forgives our sins. We're welcomed home, and God throws a big party for us. Party! God's love is amazing! So you see, it's not just a story about a party. It shows that God forgives us even after we've run away and done our own sinful things. Let's practice this right now. I want you to take time by yourself, not talking to your friends, and pray. Tell God about some things you've done wrong and ask him to forgive you. I know God wants to hear from you, even if it's telling him about things you've done wrong. Kids, I hope you know how much God loves you and loves to hear all you have to tell him. That reminds me of what matters most. God forgives me. That's right. I'm so glad God forgives us. I'm going to memorize our verse from earlier. Psalm 51.10 Create in me a clean heart, O God. I put motions to it so it's easier to remember. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Now let's put it all together. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Psalm 51.10. Great job. There are so many stories here at the library. The best story of all is the story of Jesus. He loved us so much that he died for us and came back to life. Now, when we believe in him, God forgives us. I want to tell God how thankful I am. Let's sing some songs thanking God for forgiving us. When we sing songs to Jesus, we call that worship. It's a way that we can show God how much we love him and want to be friends with him. You can worship God in all kinds of different ways. You can stand or sit, or you can kneel on your knees since we're singing to the one and only King. You can lift your hands up to heaven or keep them down low if that's distracting for you. You can dance to the video or just close your eyes and listen to the words. However you decide to worship, remember, this is a time to thank and praise God with our hearts, minds, and actions. And there's no wrong way to worship God if your heart and mind are focused on Him. Thank you for joining me for story time. Bye!